Welcome to the Makeup by Rose show. My name is Rose Ntongondu and I'll be teaching you about how to do a day-to-day -day simple look. I call it the no makeup makeup. No. Now, it's one thing to understand makeup and another thing to actually understand product. The biggest mistake that women make when choosing looks or choosing products to use is the color cosmetics. When I say color cosmetics, I mean any makeup product that has color, like the lipsticks, lipsticks, the glosses, the blushes, the bronzers and stuff like that. So when choosing um, uh, color cosmetics for the day, go for the colors with natural tones, like browns, we call them atti tones, like the brown nudes. Uh, choose uh, glosses that are like slightly off, like it's like a see-through gloss, you know, like this one. So it's pink, but not really pink. So colors that will complement you during the day, colors that don't shout. Don't go for colors that are, if you want like a very natural look, don't go for colors that are either too pink or too red or too maroon. And there's one thing we call uh, color coordination in makeup. If you wear like a blue eyeshadow during the day, because some people actually like a lot of color, do nude on the lips. Just balance the, the, the colors. So like these are blushes, I have some of them, these are eyeshadows. So when choosing like eyeshadows for the day, please go for the earthy tones, the brown tones, the gold hues, but with not, uh, you know, there's two types of like eyeshadows and bronzers, uh, sorry, eyeshadows and, and blushes, the ones that have bronzer and the ones that are matte. So I would rather you choose the ones that are matte. And uh, for, for lippies, like I said, for lipsticks, stick to that. The, the neutral hues, the earthy tones, it actually looks really nice without looking like you're wearing too much. So if you don't understand it, we'll keep teaching you in the show. And apart from the, the fun part about this show is we don't only show you, we actually demonstrate it. We don't just talk about it, we actually show you how to achieve it. So for the no makeup makeup look, even when you're doing like the liner, go for dark brown instead of black. And then for mascara, just do a little bit. Don't do, you actually have the option of like eyes, don't do, don't do uh, eyeshadow during the day. Just cover it up with concealer, put some powder and you're good to go. So keep it on the browns and the neutral colors. So uh, in, in the next session, I'll show you, I'll, I'll actually demonstrate and show you how to achieve that look. So keep it locked. <laughs> Welcome back guys and now I have a very pretty lady. She's my model. Hi Lisa, she started the eyebrows. So as always you all you, you define the brow first and I'm using a dark brown uh, eyebrow pencil. So if you have like black hair, don't do too much of it. Okay. So define. Okay. Define, do the same on the other side. So it looks a little bit funny before you fill in. And remember we said um, in, the, in the last episode, we said you don't draw eyebrows. You, def you fill in the brows, okay? So fill in slowly, okay? Follow the shape of the, your brows. Don't try to change the shape. Okay? Brushing with the spoolie is really important because it gives that illusion of like it's her, her own hair. Remember with makeup, it's not supposed to be so obvious. Okay, make sure it's well defined. But again, make sure it's not too much. And there's something that people, there's a mistake that most people make when they, they define their eyebrows, they leave this front area looking like a box. Now it looks too obvious like you completely drawn your eyebrows. So this is how you do it. You keep brushing it out, okay? You want to leave that really, really soft hair look, hair like look. Eh? Then come on the other side. You have the option of actually leaving the eyebrow like that or giving the what people call eyebrows on flick. You know, just completely defining it with concealer. So I will choose, and it's always appropriate to choose a concealer that's at least a shade or two lighter. That way it makes sense and then it's actually even going to highlight the brow. So I'm going to choose an a concealer that's a little bit lighter for her, like two shades lighter. And then I will get my my angled brush. It's a flat brush like this. It's angled. It needs to be very firm for you to be able to do the job. That's how it looks. And then I dab on both sides, the concealer on both sides. So the point is to clean under the brow and on top of the brow. Okay? So I try, try as much as you can to balance them. Don't, don't leave one looking up and the other one down. It looks really weird. 
so just a little bit not too much don't carry too much product a little product goes a long way okay so you want to give it that clean cut look Let's do the other one. Then we get a separate brush. It is a concealer brush, small one, just to one that doesn't have product to blend out the product, the concealer that we use because it's a little bit lighter. So if you use too much product, by the way, it's going to mess everything up. So make sure you don't use too much. And then you can use it to brush at the front like that just keep checking okay now if you use your concealer and then it still shows which is okay if it shows a little bit it's okay because then it ha completely highlights your brow your brow area giving a really good look but we're not done remember you use foundation on top so for the top when you're cleaning out the top make sure you get something that's a little bit darker so let me start with this one first So go slow on the brow. Again, remember not to carry too much product. Okay, the other one the same. So let me get a different brush. Again, the concealer brush to blend everything out. But though, when it comes to makeup application, eyebrows take the longest time. With time, you get used and start doing it in like five minutes. So you build up speed. Time. Remember to blend it. Okay. Make sure whatever product you're using, they're soft. If you're a makeup artist, invest in very good brushes. Your brushes will actually determine like the outlook of the whole look. Okay, you see? And then now you have to cover, remember most people, uh, the eye area is usually darker. So let's dab on some concealer on both eyes. It actually even gives us a really, really good base for eyeshadow if you're going to use eyeshadow. You can do a lighter one or like a shade lighter, it's okay. And then I get a separate brush to blend everything out, a bigger brush. You can, for this, you can actually even use a uh, you can use a kabuki brush for the blending, which I'll show you. You can use a beauty blender as long as it works. Okay, open. You see, when when we do the concealer, it actually gives a really really good base, covers any imperfections, especially for people that wear glasses or people that have a darkened eye area. It's very essential for you to dab a little bit of of concealer on that part. Now we go to the eyeshadow. Use this. It's called an eyeshadow blending brush. So I get the brown, the brown one. This this one looks really nice if you want like a subtle look. Okay. And then you can dab it on the corner, going inward. Just a little bit, not too much. So I'll use my the first brush that I use for the eyeshadow to just blend everything. And then you get your liner. Now, with liners, you have options. Now, the liner, we can leave the, the eyes like that, but still it looks like it's unfinished. So you need a liner to define the eye even more. So you have the options in liners. You have liquid liners. You have gel liners. You have a pencil liner like this one. It's black. And black actually really brings out the eyes. And if you do it like on the inner part of the eye, it gives the illusion of like whiter, brighter eyes. Okay? So it's very soft. You can see like that it's not a pencil it's a coal it's a coal pencil okay close your eyes so if you're going for like a very neutral look don't do like a very fat line do it like just underneath the so just on top of the lash just a little bit do it like that 
and then blend it out. If it gets a little bit messy, you can get your your small brush, like another small angle brush, use it to completely blend it out. That, okay? You can clearly see the difference between this eye and this eye. And you've not even done too much. Okay, do the same eye, the same thing. So we are done with the top part. So I'm trying not to go like too much on the eye because I want we are trying to get that subtle look. And then on the on the waterline, look up. On the waterline, you dab just a little bit. Okay. You have the option of using like a dark brown instead of a black. Don't go too much outside. Okay. Okay, so, so again. You can blend it out with your small brush or just leave it like that, depends with what you're going for. Okay. okay, like that. And then we finish with mascara. Now with mascara, like every time you're buying a mascara for yourself or for your clients, if you're a makeup artist or if you're, you work in a salon, whatever, make sure the mascara is waterproof. It's really important, especially if you're a makeup artist and you're doing makeup on like a wedding or whatever, make sure it doesn't run. Or if you're using the mascara on yourself and you're wearing it throughout the day and you tear up, the mascara runs if it's not waterproof. So some of the things that you need to look out for when buying a mascara, is number one it needs to give your 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 lashes more length more volume and waterproof those three things very important now you can use black you can use dark brown i'm using black and i love this brush it's it's very detailed it gives it touches every hair so small brush is better okay so and with the lashes you you put the color up and down that way it makes the mascara the lash look really long and full can see the difference between the, the two eyes, the difference the mascara makes. So you do the same on the other eye. Yeah. So let's clean up. These small brushes are very, very important because they help you clean up. They are very, they help with the details. So you can see now only the eyes done and she already looks nice. face now during the day please do not pile on makeup foundation sorry and when choosing a foundation there's many types of foundation there's cream to powder foundation there's like this one cream to powder there is stick foundations like this ones it looks like a fat lipstick and then we have the liquid foundations now depending on the brand there's some brands like Flory Roberts or whatever that has uh, foundations that are very are very they're cream but they're very light but like the foundation that I'm going to choose right now, it's very light. I like liquid. Liquid because it's easy to, uh, it glides on very well. It's easy to, to just blend out, okay? So, and as always, if you're not sure of what foundation to use, you always test it on the jawline. You test it on the jawline. So let's test and see if this will blend with our model. This side. So just a little bit over here. And then I'm, I'll use a beauty blender. I'll use this one. You just blend it out. See which one is suitable for her complexion. So there's that one. Let me try another shade on the other side. Actually, it looks really nice. But let me test. Let me test out another shade now. The, Yeah, so we'll go with the stick foundation. If you can see, this side looks a little bit pale. This one is just spot on, okay? So we're not going to do too much. So just a little bit of it. And the, the good thing with this stick foundation is actually very creamy, very light, not, not hard. Some, some of uh, the creamy uh, foundations out there, like the cream to powders, are actually very, very hard to blend. So, and most clients don't know how to blend. So this one is really nice. So some people use their hands, which is okay, but it's, uh, if you're doing it on someone else, it's very unhygienic, use brushes or beauty blenders.
You can wet your beauty blender if you want. You can wet your foundation brush. It actually works better. For me, I can use them either way. Now, if you have dry skin like Lisa, uh, you actually need to to wet your beauty blender. If not, after make sure you use the the after spray, the fixer. That way, it helps blend in the. You can see around the this area, it's a little bit dry. Don't leave the foundation like that because it's okay when you use like one color of foundation but it leaves the skin looking dull. So add a little bit of concealer under the eyes to just highlight them a little bit. Just highlight them a little bit. Sorry. So a concealer, again use a concealer that's like a shade or two lighter. On the bridge of the nose. On the forehead a little bit on the lips so during the day don't do a concealer that's too light okay then again, blend it out actually with that with the highlighting part during the day don't use very very light products don't use heavy products use for concealers that glide on easily and very easy to blend like this one Okay, and then there's the contouring part. Now the difference between contouring and highlighting, highlighting is adding lights to some parts of the face, and then contouring is just sinking some parts of the face, you know? It gives your face that really structured look. So with the contouring, you use something darker. With the highlighting, we use a lighter concealer. So with the contouring, we use a dark, you can use a darker powder, a darker foundation, a contouring stick, whatever you, you like. So I'm going to use a darker powder, and then I'm using my contouring brush. So it's just under the under the, the the cheekbone. Just blend it out. It gives that illusion of like a really structured face. So make sure you blend it out nicely. Don't just leave it over there like that. Okay. And then the other thing is people like doing makeup and taking pictures. So and then there's something we call flashback. So when you take a picture and then you're bending and then the forehead is not nicely blended, it looks like you're wearing a mask. So always dab a dark powder or a contouring powder all around the face because most, most of us actually have a darker forehead. So it really helps. So again, contour the other side. Then just blend it out nicely so it looks like it's her skin. Okay, then go all around the face now. All around the face with the dark powder. Very important. It's a very, especially if you're going to get your pic pictures taken, this is a very, very, something that you should never forget. Okay, and then don't do too much. Don't go overboard. And then come again with your beauty blender and blend out the powder with the other product. Okay. okay. And then the nose. So with the nose, you can use your brush, a smaller brush or the same brush. Just contour the nose a little bit and this is on the, on the bridge of the nose. Just dab a little bit of powder, the darker powder over there. So you can make it as narrow as you want and then just make sure, don't just leave the product there. You have to blend it out. Okay, and then after that, I use my finger Okay. So for people like that love having a long nose, these are very good tips. <laughs> like uh, the Muzungu nose. This is a very good tip. Ama if you're getting your pictures taken. Contouring and highlighting is key. Gives your your face very good structure. Okay, and then you can dab on some of the concealer that was in your brush to get like a straight line. So if when, when controlling your nose, if you, you control it, like if your, the line is not straight, your nose actually looks broken, especially if you're going to take pictures. Seriously, your nose will look broken. So make sure you always come back with your concealer brush and go like that, straight, to get that straight line. <laughs> the laughing is it's true. <laughs> okay, you can see, and then the other, this is the other tip for people that love wearing makeup. And then, I'm someone who goes to a makeup artist and says, 
I look very ashy. Give the makeup time. With time, the makeup sets. You can see the way now the makeup is actually really setting on Lisa's face. It looks better and we've not even put the, the after spray. So this is the other thing. If you're going to use a bronzer during the day, you have options. You can use a bronzer with color or a bronzer without color. For me, what I prefer is using a bronzer without color. And what is a bronzer? Most people don't understand what a bronzer is. A bronzer is the highlight. A bronzer and a highlight is the same thing. It's that mushaino, you know, that people put on their faces to get a glow. It's just the glow, okay? So when choosing a bronzer, don't choose something that's too light. Choose something that actually complements your face. And something, a bronzer, when it hits the light, actually makes your whole face glow, okay? So in the bronzer, you use the fan brush. You use a fan brush for the application. And these are the parts that we're going to put it on. Number one, the bridge of the nose, where we contoured on both the cheekbones, you can put it on the cupid's bow on your lip, okay? So we start with the, with the nose. Just make sure again, you put it in a straight line, not too much. This again helps with your contouring, okay? And then on the cheekbone, right here, you brush it up like that. Just blend it in nicely. It gives that really, really nice glow. And I prefer, if you, you've noticed, I've used it before the powder. That you can hide it with the powder, it doesn't look like it's too much. Okay? Now during the day, don't do too much. Okay? I'm blending it and then on the cupid's bow, it's right here on the lip. For the day, don't do too much again. You don't need to be too obvious. So, because we've done this before the powder, now I set it with the powder. That way it's actually underneath the powder, it doesn't look like it's too obvious. Okay? I get my powder brush, this is a powder brush, okay? Remember what we said, your, the tools that you use actually determine the outcome of whatever you're doing. So I will put it on top of that. It's like I'm setting, I'm setting the, the makeup, the whole look now. And with powder, don't put too much. You see, I'm just dabbing just a little bit. Powder has something called talc, which is the same ingredient that's put in, baby, in the baby powders that is meant to keep the skin dry. So if you put too much of it, that might actually end up dry, dehydrating your skin. Okay. You can see she looks really nice when we're not even done with the lips. Okay. Now I can get my, my contouring brush again, dab a little bit of the product that was left. And then before I do the lips, what I'm going to do, I'm going to spray on the, the fixer. Because Lisa's skin is a little bit dry, it helps to be setting as we do that okay welcome back to the show now we're going to complete the look by finishing with the lips okay so now you can see we've already done the face she already looks really nice but it's not complete without the lips now you have the option of lining the lips or just doing one shade or doing two shades depends with what you want for me even for the day i love using a darker lippy to, to just line the lips. So you can use either a lip pencil or a darker lipstick. Like this is a matte liquid lipstick that I really like. So it stays and then it really structures the lips and it goes with like every complexion. So I have my lip brush, very, 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 very important. It's very hygienic, especially if you're doing it on someone. If you're doing it, and again, for detail, it's really, really important. So number one, you get just a little bit with the edge of the brush, just a little bit of the product. Lisa's lips are actually really nicely structured, but still, it helps to bring together the look, okay? Mm -hmm. So you go all around the lips. So most people call this an ombre look, ombre ombre look. But for me, I actually use it to structure the lips, especially during the day for, for, for that subtle look, okay? That's enough. So I'm going to blend it out and then add a nude lipstick in the middle and a gloss on top, okay? So the reason I use the matte, because it's going to stay on for longer, especially if you have like an event or whatever, instead of using just any lipstick, go for matte, especially for the lining part. And then I get like a matte lipstick, you see? We have a few shades over here. You can use another, uh, like a liquid lip stain. You can use a lipstick, whatever you want. As long as it's matte, you still get the look. So 
So I went all nude on the face. So I'll try and put just a little bit of color on the lips, but not too much. Nudish, like see-through gloss. Nice. You see, it already looks amazing and I'm not even done. And then before we go to the gloss, because I, I feel like a gloss gives any woman that really, really sexy look. It brings a lot of attention to the lips. I love glosses. I absolutely love them. So before I go to the gloss, I have to clean out the, look, the lips. Now, you can leave the lips like that or clean them out with some concealer and a brush. Okay? Now, let me explain what cleaning out is. You see, at times the lipstick might bleed and then, or, or it doesn't look like it's, very, it's where it's supposed to be. So you get a little bit of either your concealer brush and concealer and just go all around the lip like that. Don't carry too much product. That way it makes the lips look really structured and defined, more defined. Okay. Actually here we are trying to define the lips even more. Okay. Yeah. So the other trick is you can get your powder the powder that you use, dab a little bit on the brush like that, and then just go around. That way, it actually even sets the concealer. Okay. Now, when it comes to the gloss, you have so many options, so many things that you can use. Depending, if let's say for example, if you're wearing, you have something pink, uh, you can grab like a semi-pink gloss. But like this one, I want to go for something that. A little bit more nudish, a little bit more glossy. So I'm going to go for this one. It doesn't have too much color, complements the lipsticks that I've used. So I'll put it in the middle. Okay. Wow, and we're done. It actually turned out really amazing. Eh? So you can see that's the final look. Smile, Lisa. <laughs> Lisa is really pretty, looks even prettier with makeup. But you can see what I was saying, like with the colors, you can see like the bronzer. You don't actually have to wear like blush every other day. Blush, remember black women don't blush. So if wear blushes, especially colored ones, it's true. Black women don't blush. So if you're going to wear blush and then wear it too much, it actually looks like it's off. So you see that look, she can wear anywhere. She can wear any day with any outfit. If, it's, if you like, want just to maintain this for every occasion, it's okay. But this is how you actually put together that no makeup makeup look. You have the option of not using the gloss, it's still okay. You have the option of actually using a completely brown lipstick, completely brown gloss. Not using gloss depends on what you like, as long as you pick the correct colors for the day. So thank you so much. My name is Rose Tongondu. I hope you enjoyed. Keep it here. In every show, we'll keep training you, teaching you, talking to you about products.